morning all. Hello. Uh, my idea this morning was to paint these uh, squashes that I bought yesterday. I bought them at the Penny Cook Storehouse and um, I thought, come on on you, don't be uh, bringing the, hauling that poor sick human out again, although I really still love it. Uh, and then I thought of something else. I thought that, that there's some interesting veg from uh, the storehouse that I bought and I thought these two together might work. I've actually got a third baby one in the boot from my friend, I forgot. So I'm just gonna make a start on this now. I haven't even done my yoga or anything. As soon as I started setting things up, I thought, look, I'm kind of inspired to just make a move on this and then I can do my next uh, my next job. So I might need to stack my habits differently in the morning now. My little morning ritual is changing shape. Um, but yeah, for goodness sake, I think once things get, once things get, uh, get done it's fine and in a way this is this is kind of meditative you know <laughs> depending on the company but doing a bit of painting is um is quite a, a quite a nice beginning to the day and i can do my stretching after i have got a bit of a stiff shoulder so i'm keen to do my yoga as well yoga with adrian is great she's got um she's got yoga for every eventuality okay so here now i've got indian ink I think I'm going to start with this and the paper towel just to establish some sort of um, feeling for the shadows that are here. So I've got my eyes half closed um, and just get the horizontal shadow straight away. And then, um, yeah, the left side of that squash that's facing me. And then there's a lovely triangle of light between the two of them. There's something very beautifully still, isn't there, about um, the squash? And then there's the um, verticals of the curtain in the background that are also kind of pleasing as a way to meet the, the brightness and the shadows in the, in the vegetable. And just helps to give a shape to them as well, you know. Sometimes the verticals in the background are very helpful to, s to see how much does the shape veer off the vertical that you're painting. I've left no room for the light on the tabletop there. Let's see, so it'll be about there. And then there's the direction that way. Okay, now I do need a nice, um, I just thought of this acrylic colour. It's, what is that? Powder blue. I think that might be quite a nice colour for the tabletop, maybe. Let me just indicate it. It's actually needing a touch of yellow ochre in with it, I'd say, to give it the real feel for the tabletop. So I um, have some yellow ochre here as well. See how that works out. The brush would be handy, a bigger brush than I've got, but I think I'll work with this now. I don't want to go um, hauling, hauling myself and hauling you around the place. You know, you know, I'm looking for the bigger brushes I'm talking with. Oh, I know where they are, they're all in the kitchen. I put them all into the kitchen um, in water the other day because just left them soaking. Okay, so I'm tolerating the smaller brush. You know what? I really am not, am I? I'm really not, so I'm going to just get the bigger one. Oh. Right, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. Amazing, keep your company there. And the thing as well, of course, is, and you'll probably know by now, um, the microphone is still not in, not plugged in because it's due to arrive tomorrow morning. I just sent, um, I or just ordered it last night in the end, you know. Oh, for goodness sake, there was a bigger brush there all the time. No. You see how the paper was kind of flimsy there and moving? That was a bit irritating. So I'm just going to tape that down. And over here as well. And now I've got my massive, there's a three inch brush here, which is great. I like to dry it off. I mean, it's damp, you know, it's not, it's not dry completely, but I like it to be fairly dry when I'm doing this kind of thing. Um, let me see color wise now. Yeah, I think I need more of the powder blue and probably let it, um, to let the white of the paper show through. I'm forgetting to that this isn't painting paper really, this is cartridge paper. 
So I'm not going to manipulate the paint too much on the surface of this. I kind of like the blue of the shadow of the brightness in here. For the total. I find that if I tape the paper all around, even if it's not painting paper, that when it dries, it flattens again. Um, and I think I will put a touch of a touch of white in there. Because there's, it's quite bright at the front there. That's this is grass. It's not at all how I imagined it would start. Which is, um, at this point, it's kind of heartening for me to, well, even as I say that now, there's another expectation that as soon as any formula comes in, I was going to say, you know, it's a good thing not to have a plan, or, or uh, it's good when things don't go to plan, but actually, as soon as I feel like I've got a, got an idea of what's happening, that's, uh, that's a, a kind of a dangerous place to be, because, I don't know, there's something like, dangerous in that, um, it, it offers an opportunity for complacency. And, um, yeah, in my head, in a way, I hope it's not now while I'm, I might just even do that there. Just bring it a bit closer. All right. You want to be able to see the fruit, uh, the veg as well, of course. I think that's okay. One second, I'll pull you back again. All right. Probably exactly where you were. All right, now what am I doing? Maybe a little bit more of the um, Indian ink. So this is going to be dark now, but I want to re-establish the edge of the butternut squash on this side. And over here, Jesus, of course, we got very wet paint now because it's quite thick. Okay. So I can do, I can establish those shadows maybe later on. When it, the paint has a chance has had a chance to dry a little bit but even just creating a platform of thinner paint there where the shadow will be i think will help for the moment because it's it is good i think to do the shadows to paint the shadows uh, thinly and uh, reserve the thicker areas for the where the light is falling Okay, we'll have an opportunity to lighten that up a little bit more again later on. Okay, so I'm going to now use a smaller brush for this next thing, which is to bring in to bring in the colour of the squash. I got a few ideas for that. I thought maybe yellow oak or acrylic, but then um, there's this yellow spray that never really works as a spray. And it's not letting me down this morning. Oh, hang on. Gosh, I thought it was actually coming there for a minute. And there's this. I kind of like that and the fact that it's already almost a gourd-like shape. It's going to be heading upstairs, is it? Yeah. The stair gate sometimes works as a deterrent. And sometimes it's slightly ajar. I guess we can make it up there now. I don't know how I feel about that. But I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt and we'll just try it. We'll just try it. And I, I kind of like that edge though. No, I'm not going to put that on. I'm going to find instead the... Where did I put the yellow oak or acrylic paint. That's what I'm looking for now. Here it is. See, I think that's quite a good colour. And let's see what, what it does from a little bit of water added to it. That's really bright, isn't it? There's a lot of colour in there. And I'm going to put some in the other one as well. And now I'm going to see what to do so, to subdue it. Oh, maybe I put some water in. <clears throat> and wipe off some of it. Okay. 
And now I'm drawn to do something bluish or something slightly different in the background from what's in the foreground. I wonder whether this... Oh, that would look going into the into the uh, squash, but I kind of like the ultramarine blue ink as a uh, contrast. So it seems like that blue is a, a, a good colour into the for the play of the curtains. Because it'll be a different blue from the powder blue in the foreground. I wonder, can you hear what I'm saying at all? Anyway, let me see. Um, what next now? Is there something? I want to make the shape of that, like to really make the shape of that. Things are going to be, I'm just going to roll my finger for these things. Let me just see what the sepia coloured ink looks like on there. Let's draw with that. Bring the shadow of it to maybe right over here. It's a lovely dark, very good texture. Size right now at all there. But I think I know I'll just work with it. I don't think that one isn't that big, is it? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna reduce the size of that one a little bit, bring it in a bit closer. And um so that it leaves this thing a little bit smaller. to travel down that drip and I'm not sure I want it to because I quite like that that drip is a bit light. Let's stop it from going all the way down. I guess if I had my hair dryer in motion now I could dry things off and then work over them a bit more easily. But man that thick layer of the tabletop was um was a kind of a funny move at the beginning. It's it's restricted some of the things that's done after. But I kinda think sometimes restriction I said that before of a couple of um things to respond to react against almost um it means that our minds are disengaged and we're kind of um, having to having to come up with a solution so having the, the, the wet paint there just meant that I, I was having to think outside the box a little bit i suppose be able to keep going with this and the good thing is about, about the videos is that I want to keep going with them. I don't want to have to start again. Actually, starting again seems like a dreadful thing to do. I, I think the thing is, it's it's a space for experimentation for me as well. So this ink I got from um, Lidl a while ago. And I don't see it there anymore. I've got four spray bottles. The sprays haven't really ever worked as sprays, but... Um, the stick is quite a nice thing to draw with anyway. I think very often what I want to be doing is to put down loose things that, that I can, that act as a jumping off platform almost to kind of um, do the next thing. So it all being slightly lost means that I can, I can reel it in, I can find it again. Whereas if it's never lost, there's something a bit dry in that. The thing about the last thing is that um, is that it can it can stay fully lost. It can stay fully lost forever. <laughs> so there is that risk, but I'm, I'm prepared to take that risk. That's a risk I'm prepared to take. Well, that'd be nice wallpaper for this room, wouldn't it? But then, oh, you can't be in there. I think I might put that there. It's just a good way of making the making the squash a smaller size too. I see a good way I need to make it rounded though. Hmm. And the thing is to, to fiddle too much as well, there's a, a resistance in me to fiddling too much because I think 
Well, the good news is that some things can be um, counterproductive and make, make me feel like I'm stalling a bit. I'm not so sure that there's a very straight line. Maybe I do want the straight line. Maybe I don't want to put that in at all. It kind of feels like it wants to go somewhere. It's very unusual not to have a thick shadow, but I call it for today. I kind of like that shadow there. Let's do it. I guess now that I've put it there, you guessed it. <laughs> Just like someone on a chat show. Uh, I'm gonna have to put it at the other side, aren't I? Or at least I want to, because I think it will, it'll help with the kind of cohesion of the thing. The shape is important though, and it being thinner is helpful, so I've peeled off the, I've peeled off the back of it a little bit. it's going to come to a kind of a point so that's fine this will do again I don't want to flop around too much I'll just tear it into piece okay right and I've always got the, the old oil, past, oil pastel option and um, I think maybe the background call is calling for oil pastel as well. By the way, I'm doing a studio set of my work, just to let you know, on Facebook. It's usually quite popular and people tend to, to um, as soon as it's put up, like I kind of let people know, well actually, I let people know in the newsletter first. The subscribers to the newsletter get a little alarm call about it, but then when because the prices are significantly lower than they would be in galleries, then there is quite a good, um, you know, people generally get, um, tend to buy quickly. And the thing to do is to, is to hit sold underneath the ones that you like. So quite a few of the YouTube videos will be going up for sale on that Facebook as well. Quite a few of the, use, the YouTube, um, the paintings I've done on here anyway. Okay, I'll just brighten up that. Maybe a bit of yellow, why not? I don't always do this with the white over it. Just to give substance to the definite squash. Definite I want to give them something more definite. Okay. Now if you're listening and saying, oh for effect's sake, she's talking so quietly I can't hear anything. How annoying. Please do tune in tomorrow when the microphone will be back on my lapel. And we'll be back in action again. This is good chalk now, great chalk. I'm just using to describe the design of the tabletop. And there's a lovely dark there where the curtain meets the bright of the squash. Mm. I've always been drawn for the other side of the, the top of the squash here. My plan has been to do something very kind of um, economic with this squash and just to have the ink and the yellow ochre. But um, it's changed, plan changed. No harm. Hmm. Um, so we had the grey chalk, which is kind of working out there, I thought. find where the background is maybe first and then I can do something a bit more dynamic in there. Even maybe I don't even realise I have that one again. Some kind of a darker grey sort of wall behind over there. I like this oil pastel colour. It's going to come up to meet the curtain a bit. Maybe I'll go 
over here. using white there to stop that being kind of I don't really like when the white paper shows through the dark grey. I don't know what it is. It's just chalk now I'm pushing over. Is it chalk? Okay. This does a work flat over there. That wall is all kind of dark grey anyway. No. It's a little bit squashy. It's a bit like the, the middle of it though rather than the darkest bit. It's more like a mid tone. Can bring it over there. And I think that's maybe where the edge of the squash will be on that side. I think on the darker one, I have great confidence to describe the shadows. I'm not sure if this is going to work all right. So at least it's defining the edge of that squash again. And I suppose that thing at the top would be helpful as a defining feature. The darker brown is quite good. I'll use that here. Leave it up there to show. Maybe a touch of the meeting of the waters. Hmm. That reminds me of a um, Postron Caravan holiday, meeting of the waters. The Volca, I think it is. My friend and I, years ago, maybe nine or ten years ago, we went on a Postron Caravan holiday over in Ireland. And then um, I mean, it was life or death every day. We were actually in charge. Two single mums were like, uh, two and three children each, looking after these massive horses uh, for a week. It was incredible though. What a coming of age, baptism of fire, whatever you'd like to say. And I certainly ended up using my voice a lot more that week. But, um, and the reason the coming, the meaning of the waters reminds me of it is because um, one of the places that we stopped was called the Meetings, Meeting of the Waters. It was two, I suppose two rivers came together and there was a lovely James Joyce quote from that one ends up now. I think it was James Joyce was connected with, with the place. I might be all mixed up with my things but I think it was a Volca. We were in Wicklow in the Garden of Ireland, Wicklow. Got the edge of the curtain is actually there. Right. Um, let me see if I can do anything with the chalks now. See if they can liven things up a bit. I could put something brighter on one side of the squash. Um, yeah, I think it needs to be like a goldy orange. Anyway, my children were like, um, Aaron was, I think, six, Lily was three. And Hope was 13, roughly. And Hope had saved up enough money. I mean, she's amazing, really. She had saved up enough money to get a horse of her own for the week. So not only did we have the two horses to contend with that were pulling the yoke, we actually had uh, Hope's um, horse called Eileen. <laughs> uh, so she used to ride behind. The girls would pass her out food out the back window of the caravan. But like we'd come upon arctic trucks and everything on those roads 
when you had to travel from one place to another every day or going somewhere new except for the last place which was absolutely fantastic it was one of one of my happiest memories i suppose every evening we felt as though we had survived a life or death kind of experience every every evening when we managed to get the horses sorted to brought all the gear off them fed them watered them let them loose in the field and lit the fire in the field and I mean, it was a fantastic adventure, really fantastic. Every evening we used to feel jubilant, like. And uh, the very last place we stayed in was called Glen Mulluar. Glen Mulluar. And the, there was um, a lodge there where we were able to have a shower and things. But the main thing about that place was the beauty of it. And we were able to stay there for not only one night, but two nights. And so um, we really... It was heaven and we felt like roaming we you know we were just able to wash uh, the children paddled in the river like and we were able to you know we were washing the dishes in the river and it just felt very much like back to basics and a very beautiful place to end our kind of a village kind of trip and the children asked to go again i mean i was shouting at them pretty much all the time you know eat anything <laughs> And uh, just getting them to kind of toe the line a little bit because I had to keep the horse in gear. I could maybe do a little bit of that now, actually. You know, with all these uh, mornings when I'm driving them to school, and maybe we could be walking. Could be using my voice a bit more there. And uh, that kind of attitude. You know, when I'm working at home, from home, there's a, there's a cer certain thing there where you feel like, um, look, I'm here and I can drive them. And I can't, you know, it's almost like I can't really justify not taking them in. So I just say yes. And it's, it's actually a nice time too to connect with them. I've kept chat individually most of the time because they're not <laughs> barely ready to get up. And the thing is, Erin is six years, so she's got a, a smaller timetable. Okay. And like, um, you know, I do these meditations in the morning and the guy sends out, um, I think his name is Tom Ferris, I think. Sam Harris or Tom Ferris or something like that. And uh, he, he was, he sends out a kind of a meditative kind of talks as well, like, or, you know, ways to really fully live your life kind of thing. And one of the things he was saying was, you know, there will be a time when these experiences that you'll be doing you all of these things that occupy your time now will there will be a time when it'll be the very last time you'll be doing that and uh you know maybe this very time this maybe this trip to school will be the last time the children ask me to drive them <laughs> that might sound a bit pathetic funny enough but i kind of feel like you know i might as well enjoy the things that i'm, that I'm doing as i'm doing them if i choose to take them like i might as well carry on it okay enough of the carry on do you think I could put some, I wonder should I put some um, collage in there now, now that it's almost done and dusted. It's kind of a nice little, um, where was it now, that one. I wonder about, I wonder about that. I wonder about putting that into, just a touch into, um, squash there. I'm not really feeling it. I think it maybe needs maybe it needs a bit of gold. Nah, that's too dark then. What else was I thinking of? Or maybe if it was like simply a bigger piece. Again. 
I'm gonna throw that. I'm gonna throw that in there. Into the uh, crazy kitchen, look to the collection. Bits and pieces flying everywhere. What do you think of that? I think it's okay. I think it's okay. And you know, I'm gonna put a touch of this here in between the dark and light, just because I want to bring it out to you. I'm sure it was a pretty good end. The other one is right up there in the well. I have a feeling, okay, I'm not gonna do that. I was thinking, I've got a feeling I'm gonna tear all this off again. And then I am actually. <laughs> am I? Let me see. I think that last one was maybe just a bit too far. Step too far. Okay. So I'm back here wondering about the. wondering about the tabletop. Seems to make more sense over here because then this is where the, the light lines would be. But in a way I thought it worked better here. Not with that blue bit though. moving. If I'm going to do any yoga, my shoulder feels like it's limbered up a bit anyway. Um, through this whole process, I guess. I'm not, still not sure, 100% sure about those carry-ins. Sure, I suppose it's okay. In a similar way to stopping eating when you're 80% done, when you're thinking, I've gone 200% over in this one. <laughs> I think I could easily stop a lot earlier. But uh, in a similar way to stopping when you're eighty percent done, I think I'm gonna. Um, well, I was gonna say I'm gonna tolerate that, but I obviously wasn't um, tolerating it. You want to go out, Margot? Sorry, I made my dear. You want to go out? She sits at the window there. Why? Why do they all? Why do the animals all have to start within? I mean, maybe there's a chance that anyway I'd get them mixed up. Like, my sisters and I were always... I was always called Maura Anya, Maura Eileen Anya. Because my two older sisters are Maura and Eileen. And um, maybe even, you know, with the cats, maybe I would call them the wrong name anyway. Even if they weren't all starting again. But it does make it a little bit trickier. What do you think, Midnight? It makes it a bit trickier. The names are the... Ems, hmm, it's a final, final move, famous last words. Hmm. I think I'll leave it alone. Let's stab at it, finally. So that's it. Right. <clears throat> Do you want to see midnight there? Patiently waiting at the window. And... It was lovely, lovely to see you. Feel the uh, energy back a little bit more today, thankfully. 34 minutes in. So we got on with the old uh, yoga. But they're, they're the squashes. I think they came out okay. A bit wobbly on the screen. And that's sepia ink, sepia coloured ink, Dale Rani sepia coloured ink that I've used right there. I may, may adjust some parts of it later on. But for now I'm happy. Okay, it was, it was lovely playing with you and I'll have the microphone tomorrow and I'll be loud and clear in case any of you are keen to hear what I'm saying. <laughs> Alright, it might have been nice to have a holiday actually. Okay, see ya.